Hello, I'm Bill Moyers, and over my 40 years as a journalist, I've returned often to the story of money in politics. In all that time, I never imagined things could get as bad as they are today. The cost of running for public office is skyrocketing, nearly $4 billion in 2004. Candidates have to get that money somewhere, and the people with lots of it have figured out how to take advantage of the opportunity to game the system in their favor. Our elections are being bought right out from under us, and our public officials are doing the bidding of mercenaries. Money is choking democracy to death. It's buying access and influence for wealthy campaign contributors and corporate lobbyists who then write the legislation, demand payback in the form of political favors and contracts, and elbow out the needs and concerns of regular people. So powerfully does wealth shape our political agenda today that we cannot say America is working for all of America. Covering the corruption is no longer enough. We have to change the system, and we can. People are, are more depressed about the system than they've ever been, and I think their concerns about the corruption of elected officials and the influence of the amount of money that's being spent in the political process and the close ties with industry lobbyists, I think people are just over the edge of, of how they feel about the system. I think people are, are more ready for change than ever before. We've gotten more calls to our office, not just from ordinary citizens uh, out across America, but also from Capitol Hill. Even our lawmakers, the uh, men and women in the United States Senate and the House, uh, want to see change. Seven states, Arizona, Connecticut, Maine, New Jersey, New Mexico, North Carolina, and Vermont, and two cities, Portland, Oregon, and Albuquerque, New Mexico, have enacted new campaign finance reforms that encourage more and very different kinds of people to run for office. They've instituted clean elections, a system of full public financing that is actually changing political landscapes and legislatures and altering the makeup of courts and commission. Clean elections is a new and substantially different approach to eliminating the influence of big money over elections. Ultimately, this will affect, to the good, public policy and the kinds of laws that are passed across our country. I think the clean elections in Maine is a very positive thing, and I think it helps more people that would like to run and that can't run. Before, the House used to be full of uh, uh, influential uh, white males. Now, thanks to clean elections, you have males and females of different backgrounds, of different cultures, of different races. So now the House is becoming more diversified. It gives you hope in a sense, and, uh, and, and that to me is the most incredible thing, is that we have hope. I mean, it's not in every state, and we're trying to get it in every state, but when you see how it works, it's, it's truly hopeful for, for greater things. Clean elections played a large part in being able to pass the prescription drug bill that we have in the state. You know, the pharmaceutical companies are huge, and they spend inordinate amounts of money, and we were able to put through a very revolutionary piece of legislation, and I think that helped. Under the clean election system, candidates who collected a set number of small contributions in their districts, who agreed to voluntary spending limits, who agreed not to accept campaign contributions from any private source, and not to spend money out of their own pockets, these candidates received full public funding for their primary and general election campaign. The advantages of a clean election system are many, and often quite immediate. A clean election system means candidates don't have to be wealthy to run for election. If the NBA was like politics today, I, uh, I suddenly wouldn't be a professional basketball player. Most of the people in the NBA are, are come from very poor backgrounds, so it would be definitely uh, it'd be Ross Perot and, and the like that would be in the NBA right now playing. The clean election system is the only system under which I would run. Um, people like me, um, I'm trained as a social worker and have worked as a social worker in Phoenix for 10 years, would never have the financial resources to run otherwise. Now that we have the clean elections, in, in the state of Maine, it frees up people to run for office who wouldn't, I really think that wouldn't have dared to do it before because of the challenge of raising money. If I had to run conventionally, I probably wouldn't. Uh, this is not a very um, rich area that I work in. Uh, there's a lot of poverty around. Uh, people living on tight bu budgets or fixed incomes. And I, would, I just couldn't go up to them and say, can you give me a couple of hundred bucks to run my campaign? Public financing levels the playing field and gives people from many different backgrounds a fair shot at getting elected. I'm a farmer. 
and, and I think it's important that, that farmers have their voice in the legislature, but farmers don't have access to buckets of money, and our friends don't have buckets of money, so it's allowed people, I think, from more, um, more common livelihoods to be able to pursue running for office. To really participate in our political system, you should have something to contribute and something to give that will help um, the constituencies that you're, you're trying to serve, and not the fact that you have wealth, uh, access to wealth, should, should mean that um, you're the one that represents those people. Public financing of elections involves more people in our democracy. It allows folks in your district to be actively involved in your uh, campaign by donating $5 contributions to your campaign. The same amount of money that I spend on a cup of coffee at Starbucks, I can support a clean elections candidate. And that means that I'm involved in the process. As the director of community affairs for one of the largest private sector labor unions in Arizona, I have seen more of our members get involved in the political process. One of the things I got to do this election cycle that I had not had an opportunity to do before is host a clean elections party for a series of candidates in my own legislative district. That involved inviting as many people as I could over to my home, each of them making a contribution of five dollars. That's all. Uh, what a refreshing change. Clean elections allows candidates to spend time with voters and constituents. The advantages of running as a clean elections candidate for me are truly that I have uh, much more time to spend with, uh, with my constituents and I don't have to worry about attending fundraising events. I can really talk about issues and spend my time going door to door, meeting with constituents and understanding what the issues are that concern them. I got to spend time with voters as opposed to spending time you know, dialing for dollars or trying to sell tickets to $250 or plate fundraisers. This was much better. And politicians say running as a clean elections candidate gives them an electoral advantage. I think that they, it's now a standard. Um, I, I don't think it means you win or it means you lose, but I think that they will look at two candidates and if they are very similar and one of them is running clean and the other one is not, it can have some influence, especially in a place like Portland. A person who runs on clean elections, they're letting me know that, you know, I, I'm not owned by any corporations, I'm not owned by uh, any PACs, I'm not owned by, you know, people who have a lot of money and a lot of influence. I'm running for the citizens.